is September the 9th, 2016. My name is Tanya Fincham. I'm with Oklahoma State University, and today I am in Canton, Oklahoma, which is in Blaine County, and this is a part of our Cowboy and Everett County project, and I am speaking with Keith Long, a 1965 graduate of Oklahoma State. So thank you for having me today. That's fine. I'm glad that you could come. Let's begin with having you tell us when and where you were born. I was actually born in Fairview, uh, Oklahoma, uh, in 1942, okay. October the 22nd. At home or in the hospital? I was in the hospital. My folks actually lived uh, west of Kent. Okay. But the uh, hospital was in Fairview. And that's in? Um, Major County. Major County. Not too far from here, though. No. Right. 20 miles or so? Yeah, about 18 miles from here. Okay. And were you an only child? No, there was two brothers and a sister all older than me. Oh, you're the baby? Yes. <laughs> okay, and what did your parents do for a living? At the time, they were farmers. Okay, in 42, the war hadn't quite got... So your dad wouldn't have been in World War II? No, he wasn't. He, uh, he missed it. Well, being a farmer, he might have missed it anyway. Yeah, and when I was about five years old, uh, well, it was before that. Uh, not too long after I was born, uh, the government started on the lake project out here. And they bought my uh, uh, dad's farm and uncle's farms that were in the uh, river bed, I guess you would call. And uh, we moved to Longdale, which is just north of here. And uh, then when I was five years old, my dad bought the drugstore down here at Canton. And uh, we moved down here. And what was it called, the, the drugstore? Canton Drug. Canton Drug. So your home place was flooded? Uh, yes. It's under the lake now? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. In fact, it? my dad uh, took the government to uh, the Supreme Court because he didn't feel that he was getting enough money. And he got more money, and then uh, he uh, got out of farming and went to the drugstore business. Because my oldest brother became a pharmacist. Well, they and then he eventually took over the drugstore. It kind of worked out then, didn't it? Mm -hmm. So it was, the, the lake was probably a CCC project? I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know whether it was CCC or not, but anyway, they they started on the lake and bought the land up, and uh, then World War II hit, and they uh, quit working on it for a few years mm -hmm. until after the war, and then they resumed building the dam then. Well, did they get to move their home? Uh, when, I mean, actually physically move it? No. no. Hmm. But the, uh, the house that they was living in uh, was not uh, flooded. You know, that area wasn't just flooded, but the farmland was. Just the, the lower river, river bottom, as they call yeah, it. Yeah, river bottom land. That's what I was trying to think of a while ago. So where did you go to elementary school? Uh, my two brothers went all the time to Longdale and graduated. My oldest brother graduated up there. My uh, other brother is a little younger. He uh, went uh, to Longdale for 11 years. We moved down here and he completed his uh, 12th year down here. And my sister, of course, started down here when she was about four, fourth grade or something. I started down here in the first grade, so I went the whole time down at Canton. Was it in one building or did they have two, like elementary and... It was all one building at that time. About how many were in your class? Mm, I'm going to guess around 20-some. Okay. So the population in town would have been... The population was greater than it is now. Was it? Uh, we had close to, uh, I think, 900, and now we're down to 600. 
Okay. And as far as city population goes. Well, in your in your childhood, what was the primary economical base for for the town? Uh, farming and uh, U.S. gypsum plant over at Southern, six miles uh, okay. east of here. Okay. And then today? Well, Same thing. Same. <laughs> we have the uh, gypsum plant still in business over there, hiring, I don't know, a couple hundred or so. Okay. And then the, uh, uh, I guess, still farming. Any tourist? Is that part of the uh, lake? Yes, brings in tourists. Some, buttons. some anyway. Yeah, uh, I don't know just how much, uh, but uh, you can tell a difference be because of the camping area. You know, uh, we had a uh, tornado go through here a few years ago, mm. and they lost uh, a lot of the. Uh, campsites, I guess, you, you know, with the trees, mature trees and everything, and that got uh, all taken out, and mm -hmm. so they're starting over out there now, built new pads for the campsites and all that, so tourist business has picked back up again. And I noticed a few oil, things related to oil coming into town. Yes, uh, we have, uh, uh, we don't, here at Canton, we don't have many uh, oil field yards and stuff, you know, with the equipment and stuff. And, uh, but the uh, wind turbines have uh, come in and uh, provided a lot of jobs. I noticed those too. Yeah. <laughs> but still farming. What's the main thing that's farmed? Wheat or is it something else? Wheat. Wheat. Yeah, that's the main thing. There's some uh, have switched to uh, Canola, growing canola, mm -hmm. and uh, you get a little bit of feed, but uh, it's mostly wheat and cattle. So in the first through twelfth you were here, uh, I noticed there was a theater in town. Was it alive and functioning when you were younger? Yeah. The Grand? The go, grand? go to the show for ten cents, you know, the younger kids. and. Uh, I think I was in probably high school when it closed down, and now it uh, has been uh, modernized, I guess you'd call it. They've uh, changed the seats in it, and uh, we got a group, the uh, Grand Arts Council, that uh, have fixed it up. and. Uh, repaired the building and but the only problem is we don't have the uh, people to direct uh, like a uh, theater group mm -hmm. you know to put on plays or anything and so there's really not many functions in the theater okay at least it's still standing yeah they they keep it up are you taping? Uh-huh. Yes. So in elementary school and then into high school, did you have a favorite subject? Science. Science. I, uh, I didn't really like school. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I liked uh, science. And how would you get there? Was it close enough to walk or did you ride a bus? Or? I had a long ways to go. I had one block. <laughs> so you walked. <laughs> <laughs> and would you get to come home for lunch or pack it? I uh, usually went home for lunch. Okay. Were you, were you in, into high school, were you involved with FFA or 4-H? No, I didn't. I, uh, I participated in the band. Okay. And, um, we had our own science club, not related to school, <laughs> that met at my house. Mm. And, uh, but I wasn't involved in that. Uh, or a little bit of sports, but not too much. What instrument did you play in the band? I started off with a uh, cornet and switched to uh, 
baritone later. Well, since they had a band, they had enough students for football? Yes. We had 12-man teams, 11-man teams, I'm sorry. And uh, we had some pretty good teams back in those days. Who was your pr primary rival? O'Keen, I suppose. O'Keen. Okay. Huh? Okay. That's still in the same county? Yes. Yes. Just uh, east of here, 18 miles. In high school, were you planning to go to college? When was it, was it expected? I just, I, I never thought of anything different than going to college. I don't know why. Uh, I wasn't the brightest student, because like I say, I didn't really like school. But I, uh, I just had my mind set that I would go to OSU. Had your parents gone to college? No. But your older brother? Uh, the one that was a pharmacist. My, uh, he uh, was a pharmacist. My other brother, he uh, took up accounting. And my sister, she didn't go to college. She did. just got married. Well, that's the way they did. Did your two older brothers happen to go to OSU? No. Uh, well, I take that back. My oldest brother, had become a pharmacist, went the first year to uh, OSU and then switched to Weatherford and took up pharmacy. Okay. So you, would you have visited him while he was there at OSU? Mm, not that I remember. Or just see if that played into your thinking of going there? <laughs> no, I don't know. Uh, I just uh, assumed I'd go there. Uh, I don't think... Uh, any other school in uh, Oklahoma has an entomology department. At that time, yeah, probably not. I don't know. I don't think OU has an entomology department. Uh, probably not since they were the land grant. I wish you was land grant and mostly ag. Yeah. So uh, that's where I... That's your major? That was your major? Yes. Was it? To start with. <laughs> oh, you switched. Well, I, I went to college twice. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about that then. I got a uh, degree in entomology. Uh, got out, ran a pet shop for a while. Uh, got drafted in the Army. Uh, went in the Army and uh, spent a year in Vietnam. And came back and went back to OSU. And I didn't quite get a degree in horticulture. I liked three-hour course that I couldn't ever uh, take. And uh, so I, I, I would have got a degree, but I, I liked three hours. So I decided not to stay and do that. A second bachelor's or, or a master's? Uh, bachelor's. A second yeah. bachelor's. So the 65 was when you got your first one? Yes. Okay, and then you came back after, using the GI Bill for the, when you came back? Yeah, they uh, gave me uh, 24 months of school. Okay. Well, shoot, we should figure out some way to get those three hours. <laughs> Not that it matters now, but... Yeah. <laughs> it would be nice. He was talking about his science club in high school. They were the first group Canton High School to even have a science club that he started all of that and went to the science contest and stuff. But yeah, me and this other guy uh, went to the, uh, what do you call it, science, science fair? Science fairs. And uh, we did it on our own and went to state with an insect collection. Oh, okay. But you didn't like science in, in school. <laughs> I just didn't, didn't like school. <laughs> but if she had let me, I'd probably kept going. I'd still be going. <laughs> but she made me get out and get a job. <laughs> well, your first job was with a pet store? A, spe a pet shop, you said? Yeah. Where was that? Enid. 
I had uh, worked part time in a pet shop over at store. And so I got out, well, I uh, decided to put in a pet shop. Now they're hard to find, aren't they? We had that for <laughs> uh, a year and they got drafted and so we sold it. Well, we, sh we should back up and say the voice you heard a minute ago was Judy. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Yeah, yes, that's, yes. Her name. that's my wife. That's your wife. Uh, 53 years. 53 years. So you met in high school or? Yes. We've known each other forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you got married in 60... 63. 63. Before you got drafted. Yes. Uh -huh. Before. But before you graduated from OSU yeah, I was too. still going to college. So Judy, you would have moved down there with him at, mm -hmm. to Stillwater at that time? I worked at Stillwater National Bank. Okay. And I worked for the college for a while doing the magazine. And at that time, uh, Keith, like he said, he would have gone on to college. He'd have been, he would, that was our plans. I wanted him to be a college professor. Uh -huh. So we loved OSU. Well, where did you live when you first went, before you got married? Where did you live on campus? Uh, Cordell Hall. Okay. Is it still there? Barely. It's going to come down sometime in the next year or so. I lived there three years. Okay. And then when you got married? Then we lived over by the fire station. Or Ramsey, I think it was. Okay. Is Washington. Washington. No, that's where the business was. Mm -hmm. We, uh, the second time we was over there, we ran a uh, shop called Fads and Favors on uh, Washington. Is that the strip? Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, I managed that as I was going to school mm -hmm. for a guy, and uh, we did. Uh, Printed, uh, screen printed t shirts and sold favors to the sororities and uh, fraternities mm -hmm. for their parties. That kept you pretty busy. That yeah. <laughs> and I went back to work for Stillwater National Bank. <laughs> yeah. right. And that and did his bookkeeping for him. So. What well, did you have a favorite professor while you were there? Probably Dr. Brian. Uh, he was an etymology professor. Well, getting a degree, let's just show my ignorance, in, in, with insects, you could have worked, uh, gotten a job as a cooperative extension person yes. with, with insects. Doing insects and, uh, but I found that um, after all this time with entomology, that the main jobs are finding ways to kill insects. <laughs> And that didn't interest me too much. Oh. So I don't know whether it was a waste of time, but I've uh, identified a lot of insects for people and this and that, you know. That I, I just haven't worked in the entomology field. Okay. So when you finished, when you came back the second time and almost finished, then what did you do after that? We moved back. Back here, didn't we? And uh, okay. opened up a flower shop. And nursery. And nursery. And uh, dealt with plants and flowers. And then we uh, eventually put a flower shop in at Fairview. And uh, then we got out of that and I went in the oil and gas business. What a switch. <laughs> And what, what did you do for that? For that? Well, I started out working uh, out in the field as a, a gas line operator and uh, for a few years and then I went to put me to work in the office. Uh, I had a local office. Uh, I guess you'd call it gas control. Uh, then uh, the company got bought out, went to work for Oklahoma Natural Gas, 
and uh, I worked in various places, uh, Tulsa, El Reno, ended up in uh, Oklahoma City downtown working in the uh, ONG office down there. And you had to move around with each one. And uh, retired from there. And then came back here at that, at that time? Yeah. We, uh, I uh, kept an, a, an apartment in Oklahoma City because we didn't want to move to the city. Judy and uh, kids stayed here. And I, uh, we used it as a townhouse. We left it. <laughs> I kept the apartment and lived down here. So to get from here to Oklahoma City takes about an hour and a half. Well, that's not too bad. No. I didn't. Uh, I like to say I kept an apartment and uh, just went back and forth. And when did you retire? We don't have Damon down here. Probably seven or eight years ago. Okay, early to before 2010. I'm guessing about eight years ago. Keith probably didn't tell you that he was president of the Entomology Club at Stillwater at OSU. Did you? No. No. Served on the student council. You got elected to that? Is, was that an elected the student council? Yeah. It was elected. A, a, a college of agriculture council. Hmm. Okay. So you just didn't go to class, you were involved with other things? Yeah. He was in the ROTC band. <laughs> See, that's why For I came years, back down. <laughs> that's why I came back down. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't take four years of ROTC, I just took. Well, was it required at that time or it was? Two years was required. Okay. So at the end of that, were you commissioned? No, probably not. It, no, you had to take four years to, do that. to get the commission. So you would have had. I didn't class. really plan on going to the service. <laughs> <laughs> so you would have had classes in the armory, the building that's yes. got, that it's architecture building now, but you yeah. would have had classes in there. Someone said they had a pool in the bo bottom of that. Do you remember that? No, I don't. Remember. See, I, I don't know. If I ha two or three people have said that, but I don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. So two years in, and you played the baritone. Baritone in the in the, well, that kept you busy too. Well, what would you do for fun if you were doing activities such as that? What would you do? Would you go to dances or football games or? Came what? home on weekends to see her. <laughs> <laughs> that counts. <laughs> but we went to. Oh, we. Uh, the games. We we. We went, we went to some games and. Uh, I got acquainted, of course, with the guys in the dorm, and we'd go out you know, on the weekends and stuff, play golf at okay. the course up north of Stillwater. Of course, money was tight, so the boys would get up real early. We're talking four o'clock in the morning, wasn't it? We'd go out and play a round of golf before they ever opened up, and that way we didn't have to pay. <laughs> It's daylight enough to, to find your ball, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and we always wondered why he didn't go in professional because he was an excellent golfer. They all loved. And we also, I, uh, a bunch of us uh, had a uh, bowling leg. We bowled over there. At the student union? Sometimes the student union and there was a bowling alley up on the north side of Okay. It's still there. <laughs> the one in the student union's not though, it's gone. Mm -hmm. I haven't been in the union in a long time. We haven't uh, we haven't made it too many ball games as I'd like to. Keith has given up a lot for our family. He uh, doesn't talk about it. But uh, both our children are adopted and uh, when we adopted Damon, he's 41, and he was a baby, so we've came. A lot of his decisions has been made so that Damon and our daughter could have a better life. So, 
it's to be commended. <laughs> and he was one of the first for Oklahoma Natural Gas. He opened up their office downtown for gas control. And they even have a plaque with his name and stuff on it for him. Wasn't it? <laughs> See, I'm telling off on him. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> but he moved from Tulsa to to um, ONG so that they could. They had never had um, a gas control like he set up for them there. So when yeah, he says, Tulsa, that was a pretty good drive. From here, it would be. Well, and at college, had you had accounting classes or bookkeeping in order to be able to know how to do all of that? No. Just taught yourself and yeah. some common sense in there? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> That's a long way from insects. To the I kind of got out of the entomology. Tell me what your plan was, though. Yeah. Why you went into entomology and what we were going to do. Oh, uh, collect insects from around the world. <laughs> I kind of liked uh, identifying insects, you know, uh, but I didn't like uh, just studying ways to kill them. <laughs> when I was going to college, uh, I worked for a uh, professor, uh, Dr. Bryan in what is called the Buggy House. It's out west of the campus. Uh, you know when you come into Stillwater, there's some, there was some big barns mm -hmm. there. Yeah. But north of that was what was called the Insectary, the Bug House. I've never heard anyone talk about it. Okay. <laughs> I guess it's probably still there. It may be. I'll have to check. But um, we, uh, we raised uh, insects. Like what kind? Uh, the big one that I worked on was uh, uh, cotton boll worm. Mm. Uh, Dr. Bryan had a, uh, I think, uh, cotton growers organization supplied him with uh, you know, money, funds to uh, do research on uh, ways to kill the bollworm because that was a major uh, problem with the cotton growers. And uh, I worked for him out there growing. Um, <laughs> we'd take the, catch the moths, They'd lay the eggs in these containers. We'd take the little worms and uh, we made an artificial food. We mixed it up ourselves. Mixed the food up, raised these uh, bow worms up, and then just put a minute amount of insecticide on the worm to see the effects. And um, I got to grow other insects on this artificial food and uh, wrote up a paper and presented it to the Oklahoma Academy of Sciences. Yeah. I like I like that part, but uh, and also while I was there, I was uh, checking a, a field of cotton for another professor. And I'd write down all the uh, insects that I found in the cotton field. Mm -hmm. Check like 100 plants and write down what all I found. Well, how many would you normally find in, a, in that? Quite a few. Well, <laughs> not just aphids. No. <laughs> That's the extent of my. <laughs> Quite a few. Quite a few. So we had, we had a good time, didn't we, Jude? Mm -hmm. Did they do anything with the butterflies that they were, they started the milkweed, milkweed program again to get monarchs? monarchs? Yeah. Uh, monarchs are, 
I just don't see hardly any of them anymore. That's a shame. But uh, I don't grow any milkweed, but I need to. And this is one of my uh, plans for next year is uh, get some seed. and Because uh, we got seven acres here. You got some room then. Yeah. The river goes right through here. And uh, we've got uh, plenty of room to grow some. Right now we don't have anything back there as livestock. We did have a <laughs> old horse that finally died. <laughs> the grandkids' pony, bullseye. We've had uh, we've had cattle and stuff like that, but uh, right now we don't have anything. Just dabbled in it. Mm -hmm. Well, Keith, when he when we moved back to Canton, Keith has been president of the school board here in Canton. President of the Chamber of, Chamber of Commerce. He has been town mayor a couple of times on the town board. So he's not. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows your face at then. I, uh, I've slowed down. <laughs> a little bit, maybe. He's been diagnosed with Parkinson's, so. Slow down Thanks some. to Vietnam. It's related to that. Agent Orange. Is it? They say, yeah. Mm. Might have caused it. Mm. And you were over there from 67? 68, 69, something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know for sure. He was in Officers Candidate School and they were killing off the fire direction control so much that they walked in and took his whole class from uh, officer's school and sent them to Vietnam. What branch of the military? Artillery. Army. Army. So you saw a little combat. Yeah. Enough, anyway. <laughs> I should have went into armor because we didn't use tanks over there. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't have gone. And how long were you over there? A year. A year. Yeah, I just served one term. And then came back. I got an early out to go back to school. Mm -hmm. I was actually only in the service about two and a half. They called it two and a half years, wasn't it? Well, no. I uh, about 22 months. Instead of 24 months, I got out early to go uh, to start uh, a term back at, uh, you know, when the school started in the mm -hmm. second uh, semester. Well, how did you get to Vietnam from here? Did they on a plane or by boat or? Uh, plane. By plane? Yeah. Then how did you get back? Plane. plane. That's a pretty tough year. Yeah, it uh, wasn't much fun. Mm -hmm. Quite an experience, though. During that time period was when, you know, maybe he had already President Kennedy was killed somewhere during that in that part of the '60s, wasn't it? It was in '63. It was the so year it was we before, got married. It was before, yeah. okay. Because we yeah. had just we were moving to Stillwater, and and I had just started working at the bank the morning that he was, the day that he was killed. See, good memory then. That's why I can always remember that. Mm -hmm. so. so for the most part you can you consider Canton home. This is this yes. is home. Been here a long time. Keith's parents farmed and um, they had the drugstore and the pharmacy here in Canton. And that was why Keith was able to have such a science class in the club. Uh -huh. Because through the pharmacy he could order. I think it'd be in, chemicals. I think it'd be interesting for you to tell about you and Joe with the how you traded with the Oklahoma City Zoo. Mm. Um, I was always a snake collector. 
<laughs> I knew that would bring the eyebrows up. <laughs> Live or dead. Besides collecting insects, uh, I uh, collected snakes. And uh, this friend of ours uh, lived here, and, and he also basically, uh, him and I are the ones that went to the science fair with our insect collection. And we collected snakes together. And uh, both of their parents, uh, the other boy that was is good friends, his dad was the banker. Keys folks had the drugstore, so they were busy people. The two boys were allowed to do just about whatever, and keeping snakes in the home. <laughs> We, uh, we found this place in Florida that we could order boa constrictors. Back then, you didn't go to the pet shop and get a snake, you know. And uh, so we uh, ordered these six-foot boa constrictors, $18, probably cost. And uh, we kept them, and then we got to uh, collecting native snakes. And we uh, become acquainted with Bob Jenny down at the Oklahoma City Zoo. He was a reptile man down there. And uh, we did some trading with him. We'd take in um, a bunch of uh, native snakes and trade them for exotic snakes, you know. I'm assuming you never got bit? Uh, not by poisonous. I've been bit by many snakes, but nothing poisonous. Not enough to keep you from doing it? Nah. Mm -mm. Snake bites aren't bad, except when they strike. You have a tendency to jerk your hand back, mm -hmm. and that rips it. But you wash it out and uh, usually don't get an infection. But like I say, I've handled rattlesnakes, but uh, I've never been bitten by one. Well, did your parents know you were getting these boas? Yeah. And they, they gave their blessing? Yeah, really. <laughs> uh, my folks didn't seem to mind too much. I kept them on the back porch and in the basement. <laughs> in fact, uh, I never did tell them but I had two rattlesnakes get loose in the basement and never did find them. <laughs> Maybe it's good you didn't tell them. Uh, <laughs> I didn't want to tell them. And uh, my mother one time got me out of bed. There was a snake crawling across the dining room floor. And she opened the... Uh, Brother drawer and a stove and there was one in there. So somehow they was getting from the basement to the house. Getting loose. Yeah. Getting out of their <laughs> however you had them, cages or boxes or Well apparently the cages wasn't too good. No. <laughs> you needed a cat in the house to take care of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so have you been to the O'Keen Rattlesnake? festival then? Yeah. I've never participated too much in it uh, as far as, uh, but we, uh, we've we gone several times. Uh, and I've, I've hunted snakes over there before. Hmm. Not, and not anymore though. <laughs> no, not, not the way we move anymore. <laughs> <laughs> So your, after, your, your idea of an afternoon fun on a Sunday or Saturday growing up was going out to look for snakes? Snakes and bows. In fact, we, we uh, <laughs> well, my wife uh, helped some. We'd go out at night, hang a sheet in the trees, put a bright light on it, and attract the insects to it. And, and then see how many different kinds you had. Mm -hmm. Keith allowed me, I was always going to be a nurse. So this was our plan, was that I was going to be a missionary nurse. 
and he was going to collect the bugs and reptiles and stuff and we were going to South America or somewhere and do that. That was the plan. And um, in our school, and you know back then, the girls was either supposed to get married or they weren't supposed to be science or any of this stuff. And I wanted to take biology and our principal wouldn't allow it. My parents had to come to school and I and one other girl was allowed to take biology. No. Can you imagine that? No. <laughs> and uh, Keith was in the class and that's how we really got, we found that we had a lot in common. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been in the late 50s? Yeah. Yes. When that was yes. hmm, interesting that they wouldn't let you take. Uh -uh. We didn't think that. They thought we wanted to take it because all the boys were taking it. <laughs> and I said, no, I want to dissect the frog and do all the fun stuff. So, Yeah, be a nurse, you would think that mm -hmm. that would be common mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. Speaking of bugs, I, this is off, off topic, but I had a, I, on, my, on my mailbox this week was a walking stick. I hadn't seen one since 30 years. Mm. Tell her what was on our back. Deck yesterday. Very nice. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen one of those in about 30 years. To, I don't know, is Oklahoma in a migratory or I mean, I don't know. this time of year? I don't, uh, know. I don't hunt insects anymore, but uh, I hadn't really thought about it, but I haven't seen a walking stick in a long time. Pray manis that I do, but uh, walking stick I don't. But we, uh, we moved here a little over 30 years ago to this house, and the soil was sandy. And we've always had a lot of horny toads. We don't have them anymore. I haven't seen one in years. Well, the drought, maybe? Uh, well, they say that it might be because uh, people treat the ant dens. Horny toads feed mostly on ants. Mm. Okay. And any time I see a red ant den, I treat it. We got a little a lot of little black ants, you know, but but I try not to spray anything that will, you know, kill something like horny toads. But I, they they're really thinned out. Mm. What we uh, see one in the road? Oh, I was up by the lake. By the lake. The other day we was going down this White Rock Road, and uh, we think we seen a horny toad in the road. Mm. And if so, that is the first one I've seen in quite a while. You didn't stop the car and get it. No, <laughs> he, he I got on to <laughs> not stopping. You don't know how many times we've stopped for things. <laughs> we catch turtles. <laughs> he's, he, he's begun. And uh, bring them home. He brings them here and marks them so he can know which turtles. If they come, if they come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they do. So. I've seen this one th three times this year. Now I catch snakes. They're used to, and I bring them home and turn them loose. <laughs> she said. She doesn't like snakes. I, I have tolerated them for 53 years. <laughs> and the neighbors call if they have a snake. A friend of mine had a snake in her house. They call for the snake man to come. <laughs> well, do you have a beehive? No. No. I don't mess with bees. <laughs> well, I mean, they're considered an insect, but, yep. but so they're not those. I don't, uh, we need bees, uh, but I don't really like them. <laughs> kind of like spiders. I got bit three times on the back with a brown recluse, and I haven't liked spiders since. <laughs> well, while you were at OSU, did you have any of these in your room, any of your snakes or collections or whatever in your room? No, I didn't. Yes, you uh, had your bugs. I had your bug insects. collection, but... Uh, and were they alive or dead when you say bug collection? Dead. Dead. Yeah. His roommate insisted on some of it. <laughs> I took and uh, 
mannered him, you know, in a certain way. More than just, I mean, not just butterflies, all kinds of bugs. All kinds. Bugs. Until a few, maybe two years ago, because they finally deteriorated, we couldn't keep them from it. He had a collection of those big ones that you had from South America, from South America the horned beetles and all of those, and he donated a lot of his insect collections to our school mm. and stuff. Well, had you gotten those yourself? I just ordered them. The uh, ones from South America. I ordered. Mm -hmm. So if you travel, I been down there. <laughs> have you traveled around the states and collected bugs as you went? Yeah, I uh, even got some in uh, Vietnam. Yes, but the only way I could get them home was to put them in alcohol, mm. and uh, it's kind of hard to mount an insect after it's been in alcohol. Mm. I received several packages that everybody thought he was sending me something nice from Vietnam. They didn't realize, and when I opened them, there was all the insects and snakes and things that he had <laughs> brought together and sent home in his packages. Mm -hmm. It was hard to get something to uh, even mail them in. Sent you some silk, though. Yes, you did do that. Mm -hmm. Well, did you did you eat some of these too? I mean, some people like different in, insects. No, <laughs> I'm not an insect eater. Or you hear about them, you know, chocolate covered grasshoppers oh, or yeah. such, you know. No, you just wanted to figure out what they were. Yeah. So if you had gone for a PhD, you would have talked about bugs and snakes. Insects? Probably. That's what I should have done, was become a professor. Well, you still have to deal with killing them, I guess. Yeah. But <laughs> then you would be helping with this mosquito. This Mosquito problem? Yeah. Yeah. But he's still interested in all of it. He always will be, I'm sure. Well, when they made the lake, that would have brought in some different types of things to the area too, as far as insects and such, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. We can show you something that we found at the lake. Can I get the tooth? Where is it at? Can I reach it? Yeah. Tony, would you like something to drink? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? In the stowing basin out there. This is just below the dam. I found a uh, mastodon tooth. Oh. When I was in high school, uh, I sent it to uh, my principal uh, up here uh, at the time. Uh, gave me the uh, address and stuff of uh, the museum down at OU. And I sent it down there to see what it was. And it's uh, out of the master dog. And they sent it back? They sent it back. Oh. People were surprised. Yeah. So I got it back from. You find it? Mm hmm. I just have trouble reaching it. <laughs> That's neat. Wow. This is new. I don't know what it is. <laughs> that you brought. It looks like uh, petrified wood. Mm -hmm. See, most homes, uh, ours has bugs, insects. Um, we still are involved. So that's neat. You wonder where the rest of him is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the, the lake had some major impact on the town, too. I guess they went from the get, from the get go, didn't it? Yeah. And then Oklahoma City's taken some of the water from it, and that was that caused some. When they built the lake, it was built for uh, irrigation, 
and flood control, not for recreation. And over the years, it got changed uh, to recreation. But at the time, the town of Enid had the rights to so much water out of the Cat Lake. But Enid sold it to Oklahoma City, the rights. I don't know, they got so many acre feet, you know, of uh, water. And so they can take it at any time. And the town can't do anything about it? We have no control. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather he hold it? <laughs> it's a little pet. What, what, is, what is it? A little bull snake. And I think I could stand having it in my house. <laughs> <laughs> Live, I mean, are you, it's okay, but... Our youth minister's wife, they have a little girl. She's a little over a year, just barely. He had it on top of the TV set, or the cabinet there. And she kept going to it, and her mother came. She, oh, this is it. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to get to watch her anymore. <laughs> I mean, it's good that someone that doesn't have any problems with it, but no, not me. I went to, we interviewed the two 80-year-olds two that had been doing the rattlesnake, OK rattlesnake thing for 50 years. And they, my colleague was brave enough to go in the pit, no, not me. I will just fine watch it from the outside. <laughs> but I wasn't expecting the noise from that many rattlers. Oh. It was, I mean, it was wild. You didn't get in the pit? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I took pictures of her in the pit. <laughs> and that, but on the sides of that building, they have pictures of people where they'd gotten bitten. Enjoying the white fang club, they call it, if you get bit. And I think I'll pass on that. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody got bit just a... Uh, the day, uh, uh, Felder? Tony Felder. Anthony yeah. Felder at O'Keen. Yeah, uh, he's, he's who he interviewed. Yeah, Anthony? Yeah, he was supposed to be giving that up. His, uh, well, it wasn't, I think it was his boy that got bit. I think it's his son. The other day. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I thought this was quite a find. It is quite a find. But as far as I know, they've never found any other out there. So it was washed down the river, or I, I, who knows how it, how it came yeah. to be there. Yeah, it was just right below the dam. I'm surprised that the archaeologists weren't out swarming the place, digging around to see if they could find more. Yeah, I know. Well, by then, I think the, <clears throat> his, the, where the dam is built, his parents had uh, two farms there, and they were still herding cattle when the water started building up. So mm -hmm. probably it has been covered with water. Just it wasn't. Uh -huh. I can't read this tag anymore. That was one that... that Looks like petrified wood. Well, do you remember graduation day from OSU? Barely. Uh, was it in the arena or in the football field? Football, field. football stadium. Mm -hmm. yeah. And did your parents come? Parents and brothers. Brothers and they all came. Everybody. When did we graduate? You graduated actually, and uh, no. I got out in January. Hmm. I went four and a half years to graduate. So I would have finished up in January, right? Right. When did we have graduation? You had graduation what? in the spring. Well, well, it, it wouldn't have been outside if it was in January. No. So you may, they may have just done it once a year at that time. Mm 
everybody did they, came back they and They had walked. it in the spring at the end because we were over we there. We had to go it. back over there for graduation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Been too long ago. Well, I just, <laughs> it hasn't been too long ago, but I don't know where we put it. We, it, and we have the picture with your mom and dad and Cletus and Max and, and us because we were laughing about the hats we all wore <laughs> <laughs> and the gloves and the. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. That was so. the thing to do. And we had a, a reception at Cordell Hall. Mm -hmm. She remembers more than I did about it. <laughs> I was just glad to graduate. Did you spend much time in the library? Yes, I did. A lot of time. Good answer. <laughs> did you have a favorite spot? Uh, I don't remember where, where it was, what floor it was. Third or fourth floor. I took uh, a course there up on the fifth floor. Hmm. Some kind of library course to help you achieve, you know, looking up stuff in the library. Mm -hmm. Remember that? On the fifth floor, okay. I think it was. Okay. Not the top floor. That's the top. Yeah. Now that top floor is half government documents and half math laboratory. Mm -hmm. Kids can come do math. It's changed a lot since the 60s. The card catalog's not there. As you mm -hmm. come, you know, on the main second floor there was the card catalog. It's not there. It's not there. It's all on the computer now. I yep. Yeah, we used to, uh, when I was living in the dorm, uh, we go to the library about every every night and study and go to the student union and have something to drink and go back and study some more. Usually Coca Cola or yeah, or coffee, Coke, soft drinks. Did you have a have a car when you were there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you could come back and forth pretty pretty easy. A uh, fifty-five Ford. <laughs> Yep, made many a trip back and forth to Canton to store. Well, do you remember if you took one suitcase or two? I don't know. I'm sure it wasn't like what they come with today. TV, microwave, refrigerator. No, we had a um, popcorn popper. <laughs> That was our uh, our uh, we'd heat to uh, make popcorn or uh, roast peanuts on it. He heated soup in it too. Yeah. Virgil did. Mm -hmm. One guy I remember had a little aquarium in his room. But we could sit there in Cordell. We was on the uh, east side, center, and we could watch football without going to the stadium. It'd be nice and warm and dry. Yeah. <laughs> if the weather wasn't too good, sit there and kind of watch the game, you know. Huh. Or, or what would you do for food other than that? Was there a cafeteria in the, in the dorm? Yeah. In the dorm? Down the basement, I guess you call it, the cafeteria. My uh, my meals were folks that paid for the meals with the uh, room, you know. So you so did. I had three meals a day, seven days a week. Did you have to work while you were there, or did your parents no. just covered it? My folks were fortunately uh, able to pay it, and I didn't have to work. Well, tuition probably was reasonable then too. A uh, whole lot cheaper. Yeah. yeah, my grandson just started college down at uh, Southwestern and there's a whole lot of difference mm -hmm. in the price. 
Are any of them interested in insects? No. <laughs> Just you. Okay. Her grandson is a history nut, but that comes from Keith too, because he likes that. So. Yeah, he's uh, he's into history. What did you have a class that you just about didn't pass? Yeah, uh, a couple of them. algebra. Mm -hmm. I never was good, and I said I was good in math until they got the alphabet in it, <laughs> and uh, I had a animal husbandry class, a judge in livestock. And I didn't do too good in that. But the year we got married in 63, yes, he, the, they had a locker plant on, what was that street? What's the main street coming in? I can't even think. It was Washington. No. It, it was on the end of the... But anyway, they had a huge bull, remember? Fiberglass. Advertisement, you know. Tell, go ahead and tell her. <laughs> what did you do with that? <laughs> well, the uh, logger plant. Uh, my dad would give us beef. He, uh, well, there was four of his kids. He'd buy a couple of uh, steers, have them butchered, and give us each a half a half of beef every so often. Well, of course, uh, we didn't have a deep freeze or anything, so we rented a space at the locker plant. And they had this contest. They had this big old fiberglass uh, steer out there, bull, and uh, you're supposed to guess the weight. And uh, I won so much uh, meat. And they said he had so much trouble judging and everything, they couldn't figure out why he was the one <laughs> that guessed the weight of it. But it wasn't alive. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't like math, so was it a just a guess? <laughs> just a guess, yeah. A lucky guess. Well, you would take the beef from here to Stillwater? Yeah. Put in a, you rented a, a drawer in a locker plant. Hmm. So it would be frozen here and it would stay frozen enough yeah. to get it there. Mm -hmm. would that, how long would that last you as a student? Well, it was, uh, this was all after I was married, Okay, so living okay. Off, uh, off campus. So doing hamburgers and steak and such. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe half a year or half, uh, half a one would last a you half a year. Yeah, it would last us quite a while. There's only the two of those. Would they do chickens too, or just beef? Just uh, beef. They just bought the beef. Mm -hmm. If we wanted chicken, we had to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> well, did your grandparents? They were they grew up here in, in Canton area too. My grandparents. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad's side of the family come from Newkirk. Okay. Uh, my mother's side come from this area. Or were they born in Oklahoma, or had they come had back for part of the run, come in part of the run? Uh, the, my, my mother's side, uh, as far as I know, were born here. My dad's side uh, was uh, from uh, Nebraska or somewhere up in there. Okay. Where they were probably farmers, too. Yeah. Yeah. I was just trying to, if your parent, grandparents, were they, did they still have a farm when you were little? Or was that part, the lake took, for the most part, had been theirs? They had, uh, I hardly knew, I didn't know either granddad. Okay. Uh, my grandmother on my dad's side was living in uh, Missouri. My other grandmother was up around Longdale. I just wondered if they had chickens. 
Yeah, yeah they had, uh, uh, they were farm, farmers. When, in high school, did you work some for your dad in the pharmacy? Not much. <laughs> Too busy getting insects and snakes, huh? Yeah, I, uh, I guess I uh, was pretty fortunate. I didn't have to uh, work out, and uh, since my folks were both tied up in the drugstore, I spent a lot of time on the river. Okay. Can't you swim? Not good, <laughs> but I spent a lot of time in the water. <laughs> shallow water. It's hard for him to to get down to the river and stuff now. Did you did you noodle? No. No. I know stick my hand in there. <laughs> I'm sorry Tony, that's our ambulance. I can't I'm an EMT. Okay. I can't uh, see people doing that. Afraid, well, you're not afraid of these but Yeah. But you can see them, though. You know, That's right. The other you can't. I understand that. Plus, they got teeth. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, they don't want to go from what I understand either. Too easy. No. I have better places to stick my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get into that? Well, uh, we've we've heard some people tell stories about noodling. Yes. Uh, I will not do that either. No. <laughs> So as you as you transition from OSU to these other various jobs and into your into OG and E, did people know you were an OSU grad? Yes. Did they have a few things orange in your closet? Yes. A few things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's real fortunate Canton's colors are black and orange. I noticed that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the tigers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which I think I she was, oh, Oklahoma A&M was the Tigers way back. Oh, were they? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. That's for the orange and black. Mm -hmm. Stillwater National Bank used to have a picture that hung in their lobby. Yeah, we've got, uh, I get uh, stuff for birthday and Christmas, you know, OSU related mugs and cups and flags and what have you. When was the last time you were on campus? Last year. Last year we went Ball to the game. games. Football, basketball, football. football. I've been asking the alum if they know the alma mater. Do you happen to know it? No. I have to read it. So I just, was just curious. A few have been able to say it, part of it for us. So. Mm. With this Parkinson, he's some of the memory is not as good as it I, used to uh, be. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to say it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Can you carry a tune? Not very no. good. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a uh, golf cart that I run around here, and I've got a couple of OSU flags on it. Well, and you the can, kind you hook in your window, you know, you see it. And well, you can tell when you pull up in the by the road that it was an OSU, <laughs> OSU yeah. fan lives here. Flag and stuff, and, and uh, some friends of ours, real good friends, they're OU, and if OSU is losing, she will be on the phone calling, and we don't answer. <laughs> And if OU is losing, we call her and she won't answer. <laughs> so. We uh, we try to make a game or two every year, but Judy is uh, she uh, can't walk too far, and you usually have to park quite a ways, you know. So I don't know if we're gonna make it this year or not. We may try. We've had a lot in our family, and that's, that is, my mother has been real ill, and she just passed. And we've had to be caregivers more than anything that has made our decisions of what we can and can't do. Right. 
My sister's husband didn't go to college. He was a farmer, but he was a real strong OU fan. He had four kids. They all went to OSU. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was he, he gave them a choice. And their their kids all went to OSU. The grandkids are headed to OSU. So oh, wow. You got quite a few OSU in your family then. Mm hmm Yeah, my uh, oldest brother two of the kids went to OSU. Mm hmm into agriculture or something else? Uh, uh, engineering okay. and... Uh, I don't know what Melanie took up. Melanie's was... I'm not sure either on hers. But both of them went. One of them went to OU and he's never worked a day in his life. <laughs> <laughs> That's been their favorite saying. <laughs> this is the one that went to OU and the whole family has, hasn't has been able to get a job. <laughs> he, he ain't likely to get a job. He no, don't he want a job. <laughs> His mother supports him. Well, I mean, o, OU's a little bit further distance-wise from here than OSU is. But I guess Panhandle State would be closer. Oh, maybe not. No, much Still maybe not. is 90 miles. Basically. Panhandle, I don't think it's much. I think it's further. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Stillwater would be closer. And it's a pretty easy drive out 51. Just straight, straight down the road. Mm -hmm. Well, would you go to the homecoming events? Uh, we yeah. haven't. But we did. We have. Mm -hmm. I'd say we, we did. We try to go to a game or two, but usually not homecoming. Well, when you were there, was homecoming as big a deal as it is now? Yeah. Was it? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I, I remember staying up all night working on the floats. You were in a fraternity? No. No? Our dorm. Your dorm did one. Okay. You were an independent then? Yes. <laughs> you, Very. So you, you <laughs> popped? What they did, well, I think that's what they call it, isn't it? When you're working on float, put those the tissue in the chicken wire. Tissue in the yeah. We did uh, stay up all night working on. It. And your grades suffered that week or two. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> that was more important. Well. <laughs> yeah, the homecoming was a big event. Well, being in ROTC, you'd have to wear your uh, uniform to, to class, or was that part of it or not? Um, no. Didn't have to. Didn't have to. I wondered if about that. Cause you probably you had, or an outfit that was for ROTC, didn't you? Yes. You just didn't have to. I don't remember just what we wore to, but uh, no, we didn't have to wear to class. Well, in those in the '60s, did you wear blue jeans or did you wear dresser dressier type pants? Dressed up. Did you? Well, then when you came back, it's completely different. Yeah, were you blue jeans then when you came back the second time? Yeah, I think that's curious. And why, why, why is that? You know, why, why the change in that short amount of time? Mm -hmm. But they uh, look like heck nowadays. <laughs> Pajamas. <laughs> yeah. A lot of times, yes. There was even some classes when he, the, the first uh, attempt at college, the first college, that he wore ties and jackets wow. you know, to class. Suits. Suits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Other people too? I mean, it, it was that's what was expected? Well, I don't know if it was expected, but that's what most people Really dressed up. Professors did too, I bet. Yes. Yeah, they not so much, but they don't all now either. Hmm. And for homecoming, we all dressed to go to the events and stuff. It was entirely different when we came back. And you got a cassage? Yes. For homecoming? Yeah, that's neat. Do you remember who the president was for the college at that when you were there? 
I'm not sure who it was in the early 60s. Bennett was probably already gone by then, so I'm not sure. I can't remember for sure. Could have been Will Will Hams in there somewhere. Will Hams. I don't. I don't recall. I don't remember. You wouldn't see them around campus too much in in your circles. No. I didn't uh, socialize with him. <laughs> well, was the dairy barn? The dairy bar barn was there when you were there, where you could go get ice cream. I remember the donuts and milk. Okay. <laughs> There you go. And that building was pretty close to the library, wasn't it? Yes. Close to. It's not there anymore either. Uh, yeah, I used to go by there and pick up a donut and a cup of milk. Well, was the uh, hideaway pizza place there when you were? I don't there? believe it was. Came after the we I remember know. when I was over there, the first time I was over there, the, uh, some hamburger joint opened up. Like, a, you know, like a McDonald's, but it wasn't. Uh, I don't remember the name of it, but you could get like 15 cent hamburgers. I can't remember the name of it. It wasn't place. Sonic. No. That, that had been it wasn't one. none of these that you have today. One thing I can think of is Scotty's or or Chiffy's. <laughs> I, I I don't recall I don't the name, but I know it just opened up, and we can drive it in and get some cheap hamburgers. And he came back from Vietnam, and we were running a store. It was called Fans and Favors, and I was working at the bank. And just before we decided to move back to Canton. Um, Eskimo Joe's, Stanley and them, were getting their funding together and everything to start. I said, we made a big mistake. <laughs> Not buying into that. That's what we were doing too. And uh, they, they were talking to the, the manager and the stuff about starting that Eskimo Joe's and doing silk screening and stuff. So that was just beginning. With the t-shirts? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And it's still going strong. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Big business. Yeah, and they, they, even the building itself has expanded some to now. <coughs> I haven't been in it lately. It's always crowded, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It is. And when the students come back, forget it. You know? yeah. so, and football starts, forget it even more. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when well, we've been over there for a ball game or something, we go by there, well, we usually don't even go in. It's so full. That was the go-to place for a long time. It still is. Yeah. Was there a movie theater that you you all would go to when you were there? Was yes. it was it on where Hideaway is or downtown? It, it was, was uh, Hideaway. North of the Foyway. Stop downtown. I don't know. You remember Cats? Mm -hmm. I know where that was. It was yeah. north of there okay. on that highway. The Leachman. I don't remember what it was called. Uh, I don't know. There's there's like three from that time period. And one was closer to campus, closer to the where the Hideaway is. Well, we live just a little ways from where the Hideaway is now. Stillwater has changed a lot. Yeah. This looks like Canton has changed some since your mm -hmm. younger days. And a tornado came through, you said. Yeah, out the lake, uh, luckily, uh, well, the town had one back in 49. 50. 50, somewhere 50. there. One hit the can itself. And then uh, we had, they called it uh, straight winds, but it's more like a tornado here at our house. Uh, we had a storage shed, metal storage shed down there. It landed up right here where that uh, birdhouses are. Uh, they put a uh, 
big three trapped <coughs> cottonwood tree in our swimming pool and we had this hundred year old barn that was here when we bought the place and we finally decided to uh, save it and so we put a metal roof on it, orange color and everything and uh, just got it done and it lifted that roof off in two pieces and laid it up here by the house. And destroyed the barn. Yeah, it destroyed everything that was in the barn so we just dug a hole and buried it all. Uh, a few years ago, what, three or four years ago, one came through the lake and traveled quite a ways before it got to the lake and then kept going up towards Fairview and it just uh, leveled the camping areas out of the lake. Well, do you uh, have a hidey hole here? Have a, do you have a uh, shelter? We have the basement. Yeah, okay, that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, no snakes. <laughs> no, there's not supposed to be anyway. <laughs> not that I'm aware of. No snakes. Where do you have to go to get groceries from today? We got a grocery store downtown. Downtown has one? Barely. But we do have a grocery store. And when Keith grew up here, there was three, three grocery, grocery stores. stores on Main Street. Wow. We had like three or four clothing stores. Um, two two drug, drug stores. Two drug stores. And I don't know how many, four or five filling stations. Wow. Was there a five and ten, like a Lay's five and ten or whatever they are, a five and ten store? Is it five and dime or whatever they call it? Matter of fact, her folks had one. My folks ran it, so. What was it called? It was called Nelson's Variety Store. And if you drive down Main Street, they took off the front, and there's our name. They left it, and it's Nelson's Five and Ten. So now it's a. Um, it's a this and this that. This and that. Mm -hmm. Antiques and. Uh, New yeah. stuff, and it's just she's just got Junk. everything in there, everything in there, so. Well, for it to be called a five and ten, you could get some things for five cents or ten mm -hmm. cents or whatever. Mm -hmm. And penny candy. And then Keith and I took that store over along with our two flower shops. <laughs> and uh, Keith, had, we had a whole counter of penny candy. Penny candy and uh, candy in the bulk. You go ahead and get you a quarter pound of peanut clusters or... Uh, one slices, or you know, we sold it by the pound. And there were enough customers to keep oh, yes. keep it keep yes. it going because we sold. Um, Hard to keep the candy. You know? Yes, and we sold toys, and we sold household everything. goods, and everything. It was a it was a variety store. And the farm. did you uh, have an old five and nine? Where you grew up? Mm-hmm. It was called Davis's, I remember. Yeah. Have you ever been to uh, Branson? No. There's a five and nine store there. Okay. Just like the old one. I like to see the storefronts where you've got the two doors. I mean, and then that glass plate's in the middle. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could tell that was by five and dime. <laughs> five and dime. Well, we got a dime for allowance, that's why I remember. That's what we did too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we saved those up. Yeah, I remember uh, back in school days, uh, we'd go to the bakery and get, uh, what was it, two donuts? Two donuts for a nickel. <coughs> then we'd go to the drugstore and get a Coke. <laughs> For a nickel. Did the drugstore have a soda fountain? Yeah. Did it? Cool. One of them did. Ours. Keith's son was always the spoiled child because <laughs> every day after school he would come in for a milkshake and ice cream. And to this day, I mm -hmm. still like milkshakes. <laughs> <laughs> 
what, what did you have an allowance or you, well the, since they owned the drugstore you didn't have to pay you just, I didn't have just, to pay I just went and ordered <laughs> shoot, shoot me up an order huh mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah well did you get an allowance anyway for other things yeah did I don't you? remember how much no well when would you have gotten your car when you were 16 or when you got through high school or, or I got it just before graduation that was part of your graduation gift? I guess. So they could get me away to college. <laughs> <laughs> so they wouldn't have to take you back and forth? It wasn't very fancy. Yeah, and I had to paint it. It was kind of rusty. Well, how much age difference between you and, the ne and your sister, the next one up? Four years. Four years. So she would have already been out of high school when you got there? and. Yeah. Pretty much. She got married. She graduated in May and got married June the first. Seventeen years old. And still married. Uh, he's passed away. Yeah, so You're right for her, I guess. Then it yeah. worked. It worked. Mm -hmm. My uh, okay. Oldest brother, I think he was 13 years older than us. And then my other brother was 11 years older. Okay. And they both passed away. And I'm assuming that none of those three were interested in snakes and brought those home? No. No. <laughs> so they, your mother wasn't prepared for that? No. I was uh, different. Well, what did you end up doing with the boa? It died. Yep, it won't It die. got pneumonia. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, my folks weren't quite into it as much as I was, so they didn't provide me with a warm place to keep it. <laughs> How long did it grow? How, how big did it get? Oh, not, I didn't have it too many months. <laughs> And winter set in, and it was unheated, so uh, we lost it. And I, I've still got it in alcohol, just like that one. <laughs> it's not in. I mass. can uh, show, <laughs> show it to you. <laughs> what would you feed it? Uh, <laughs> we got to baby chickens. <laughs> <laughs> But it didn't die of starvation, it just no. died of, Got it didn't like Oklahoma winter. Too cold for it. Mm. Did you just get the one or did your friend get one too? I just had one. And did, but did the friend get one as yeah, well? Yeah, it went the same way. Did it? Okay. His wasn't parents, prepared his for too. keeping them warm. Mm. Well, he had a reptile house, I mean, they had taken a small little building and fixed it up, but it just... Well, he didn't have that though when he had the six foot six boa foot constrictor. One, so. It just came in the U.S. Post? Or did you have to go pick it up in the city? Uh, it came in on the train. Came in. Well, you should tell about your getting to go to the uh, Boy Scouts. Yeah, you just big at Boy Scouts. Yeah, but yeah, it came. Uh, the train at the time. Yeah. We had a train through here. I saw the depot. When did when did that go out or stop? Oh, I don't know. A long time ago. Quite a long. Time. Yeah. So it came in on the train. You just went and picked it up. No. Yeah. Matter of fact, uh, we got. Um, 1957. I was I was a Boy Scout. In 1957, they had a uh, jamboree, national jamboree, in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, and I got to go to it. And we t rode a train from here to uh, hit the high points. We went to Kansas City. Went to Detroit, went to Chicago, went to Washington D.C., 
Philadelphia, New York City, into Canada, and all back. And in going to the Jamboree, nobody here had ever gone to one before. But uh, then my buddy and I, we collected snakes, horny toads. We took them with us in cages. Alive. Alive. Okay. <laughs> uh, for trading purposes. Um, we left on a train from Enid. Enid Depot. His cage come open over there in the depot and it, all his snakes got out in the depot. Uh, so I had to catch all those. And we uh, took them up there to Valley Forge, was at Valley Forge for about five days I think. And uh, we traded snakes and stuff with kids from other parts of the country. They made the front page of the Enid Morning News. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was all his. And they blamed us at Keith Long from Canton, Oklahoma, and they had pictures and everything. I said, <laughs> they hadn't even left the state and they were making headlines. <laughs> so the snakes you brought back you'd never seen or you hadn't had before. Yeah, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. We took horny toads and a lot of those people had never seen a horny toad. You know what horny toads are? Yeah, I'm not sure I would recognize the difference between just a regular frog and the Oh, one. I think you would. They have little horns. Well then, I don't think I've seen one up close and personal. <laughs> well, I wish we could show you one. <laughs> But anyway, uh, would you keep these with you, or would they have to go in with the luggage, baggage? Uh, yeah, they had to go in the baggage. baggage. Mm -hmm. I had a well-constructed cage for mine. I don't remember what Joe had. I mean, you didn't take any of these with you to campus. You'd already gotten rid of all of your snakes by that time. Mm-hmm. And your mother probably said she wasn't keeping them. Yeah, she wouldn't have took her. <laughs> mother was pretty uh, easy on me, uh, but she didn't care for them. She tolerated them. Well, growing up was church an important part of of your of your family life? No. Uh, I went to church in Sunday school, but uh, my folks didn't. Well, is the house that you grew up here in town still standing? Mm -hmm. Where were they? Where you were? Yes. Still there. It's not in the best condition, but it's still here. This old house was in pretty sad shape when we bought it. Who had it? Who had originally built it? Do you know? Mm -hmm. And that was interesting too because we didn't know it. It's a hundred years old. But the man that built it was a pharmacist and owned the first drugstore here in Canton. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know that until we got the abstract and was reading. So it was kind of strange. And when we tore out walls and stuff, we found a price list from companies where they had bought stuff for the pharmacy and the drugstore. Mm -hmm. So we had all those. Great. Is it one of the bigger bigger ones in town? One of the, not too many two stories? In town? Well, actually, this is three stories and a basement. Well, then it probably is the biggest it's one. It's the tallest. <laughs> Top, tallest. It's the tallest. I don't know if it's the biggest house, but it's. Well, evidently it was built to stay, to, to mm -hmm. last. This was an old uh, farm, too, mm -hmm. uh, here. Uh, they uh, had the old barn, 
uh, chicken house. Uh, you know, they used to have to back up to a chute to load cattle and stuff, mm -hmm. and that part's still here. And anywhere you dig, you'll always run into scrap metal mm -hmm. and bottles. Glass, bo glass bottles? Yeah. I've got a collection of old, old glass bottles. But like I say, just about anywhere you dig, you dig up something. Well, in Canton, some Native Americans are around too. Mm -hmm. Did you have, would they, they go to school with you? High yes. school, elementary school? Back in my day, you very seldom seen when you graduate. So. Mm -hmm. They just, they quit school. Nowadays they do. Well, what's the most, the population today you said was around? Six hundred. Do most of those people live and work in in the area here, or do they do like you commute to? I think most of them live that live here work here. Work here. Well, they don't actually work in Canton. We They're have around here. U.S. Gypsum Company, mm -hmm. and like our daughter works in Fairview. Um, we okay. got a pretty good sized casino out here. Okay. I noticed the high school coming in was pretty decent size too. Now. Yeah. Yeah, the school used to be uh, what three blocks south of here. Mm -hmm. Three blocks south and a block east was where we went to school. Well, are all twelve grades in the, this building down here? The new one, or are yeah, coming up fifty-eight. All except for pre-K. Pre-K is back down there. Well, there's quite a bit of activity in town, I think, for a, a town this size. Have you been uh, ever been around Canton Lake? No, I'm going to do that when I finish. I'm going to go up and take a look. Yeah. You go out there, you'll go by the casino, okay. going to the lake. Okay. You stop and play the slots. <laughs> <laughs> not on state time, I don't. <laughs> in a state vehicle. <laughs> That's not too good. It's my daughter's, our daughter works for... Um, well, they got a good place to eat, though. <laughs> well, okay, sure. She sure. works for DHS, and uh, child support payments, and so she has to go to court and stuff, and she said, it's not real cool to take the state car <laughs> be where you shouldn't be. Well, yeah. if it have water, if it has water in it now, it should be nice to see. Yeah. It's real full, real full. Well, a couple of years ago, it was. Yeah, I remember yeah. there being reports that it was just way, way, way down. Yeah. And there were some legal issues. We were just lucky that uh, it got filled back up as soon as it did. Ordinarily, it would have took many years to fill back up. With all the rains, it's really helped. Well, I mean, but there's still legal legal issues that can't claim a good chunk of it. The Oklahoma City can take it. Take whatever they want. Any time they want. There's nothing mm -hmm. they can. The government can't even do anything because they've uh, sold the rights to them. Mm -hmm. But that's the reason the lake was built was for conservation and. Flood control flood and control. irrigation. Never used for irrigation. Mm -hmm. But they said that if they did use the irrigation, it'd all be down around Watonga because the ground's too high here for it. Well, they didn't think that through too much, did they? No. <laughs> Somebody didn't do the planning. <laughs> Well, it helped at the time, I guess, we brought the economy and work into the town when it was being built. Mm -hmm. And the lake has maintained Canton along with Southern. It's the, uh, some fish, some fish capital. Walleye. 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 They have a big walleye uh, tournament every year. See, I'm not sure what kind of fish that is. I'll have to go look it up. It's a uh, good tasting fish. Mm -hmm. 
We were also, since we had the store at Stillwater, Keith and my parents had the variety store. They sold like white shirts. And we were the first ones to come over and do silk screening with the walleye rodeo that we have. And Keith did those for them. Um, did the silk screening, made the screen. And, and so we printed off shirts and sold them for the walleye rodeo that they have. And it was the first one. Years ago. Years ago. So you have some artistic talent too. Huh? No. Not really. We just <laughs> used the picture <laughs> and worked no, it out. No, I had a friend that drew the picture. Okay. So is it a really a rodeo rodeo? With you no. round them up at the lake. <laughs> okay, that no, kind of rodeo. It's just called a rodeo, but okay. there's no horses involved. Okay. <laughs> well, I thought there's enough farms out this way that there might have been. So it's fine. Yeah. But we do have like the parade, and it, it it's a weekend that uh, about four or five days that brings thousands of people into Canton. So what time of year do? What's it? May. Like spring. First part of May, usually. That's when they're spawning and stuff, so that's usually when they have it. And uh, there's a fish or two, or what fish or two, there's, we all contribute to it and they uh, tag them. And if it's caught, there's a thousand dollars and five hundred and so forth. So it's mm -hmm. quite a big event. Do they get to be pretty big, pretty big size pound wise? No. Yeah. Uh, if you caught a 10 pounder, you'd be there good. Is it catch and release, or do but you have to? Uh, no. Well, a good flavor, you know, for fish. Hmm. Well, you said round them up, you still use a hook and, hook and, <laughs> yeah. Hook and line? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that brings in business into the town, too. Mm-hmm. That's the whole purpose. And it was started back many years ago. And you have a Mexican restaurant downtown, I noticed. It's real good. Is it? Is there anything, uh, other eat, eatery there? Um, There's uh, McNabb's Grill on Main Street. Okay. Uh, next to, well, close to the grocery store. There's um, the Overlook Cafe out the dam. Okay. On the other side of the lake is Baird's Baird's mm -hmm. uh, restaurant out there. What else was that? The One Stop. Oh, One Stop, which is the uh, quick shop at the west end of Canton, has uh, a grill open till three o'clock in the afternoon. Well, you've got choices then. Mm -hmm. Without having to go to Watonga or Fairview. Probably not a great deal, either one of those places either. No, Fairview's not as good. I don't think Fairview has as We well, probably got as much selection as they do. Now they've got uh, Taco Mayo and uh, pizza Sonic. And Sonic, yes. And Pizza Hut, you know, but they don't have much other. And a cafe in the, in the bowling alley. Yes. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's good. We, once Keith retired, and of course his brothers were, we <coughs> tried for all this time uh, to meet with his brothers and sister once a month, and we would go out for dinner that evening. That way we got to see each other and everything. We just haven't been able to do that here lately. So we knew about all the restaurants around close. <laughs> Well, that's good. Uh, the Mexican, most of the little towns have one nowadays, and people were going into it, so I figured it was good. This one here is, uh, I mean, you go in there, and you won't know anybody. There's so many people coming from other towns into this Mexican restaurant. It's well known. Well. Hmm. How'd you come into town? I came up 58 into town okay. and stopped and took a few pictures. I like to say, I don't know about 51, whether it's 
over up to traffic or not. That's a pretty drive coming up from from the what two seventy whatever that is up fifty eight. It's pretty through there. Mm -hmm. Not completely flat, but it's yeah. got a little mm -hmm. bit of rolling, which is bit, which yeah. is pretty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, this is not uh, flat country right here. You go by Old Ken, it is. I cut through and I had never been to Roman Nose, so I went by there I couldn't, didn't see much. There's a lake there too, evidently, and, yeah. a, and a golf course. Mm -hmm. So, I saw those It's two a heck of a golf course too. <laughs> it, it looked like it was up and down, and up and down. <laughs> and they say do not reach into the hole <laughs> to Rattle get your... Snakes down there. Ooh, okay. <laughs> it's, it's really bad. There's a lot of them down there. So I take it you've played it? Yeah. Got any holes in ones? No, no. Not at all? Not yet? Not yet. Is that the closest golf course to you? Well, there's one at Oakeen, and uh, it's not much. And then the uh, Fairview Country Club used to be, went out of business, and uh, some guys have got it going again. I have it been up to it since I got it opened up again. It's the closest because it's just, there's a lot of It's on the north side of the lake. Yeah, it's just on the north side of the lake there. And um, it was, it was real nice, uh, but like I say, it's been closed for years. And just got it back. We well, didn't have a lot of free time to get to play. No, I haven't played in a long time, really. I got a new set of clubs I need to <laughs> I gathered up a bunch of old walls. I'll go back here by that tree and uh, just sail them back in the pasture. <laughs> her, her brother and I did that once years ago. Oh, we didn't even look for the balls, we just left them. <laughs> the old ones, bad shape. Not ones you'd play with, you know. He won't take me golfing after the last. Uh, she doesn't watch her ball. <laughs> <laughs> she don't know where it goes. <laughs> you didn't go play with him at, at Lakeview when you were in Stillwater? Uh, no. Uh, mm -hmm. 4 a.m. in the Not morning? Not at 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. Did y'all did share clubs or did everyone that went had their own? Uh, everybody had clubs. Had their own? No. You had to walk it. If they weren't open, you'd have to... We yeah. always walk. Walk, walk. I very seldom rent a cart. I've got a cart now, but I don't have a way to take it. I don't have a trailer. I have to borrow my son in laws I guess. <laughs> well, have, have you experienced some quakes? That's, well, we've had one re recently in Stillwater, so I wondered in the gas and oil business you would have paid attention that, to. Uh, that last one, what was it up at? By Pawnee? 5.6. They've upped it. Oh, have they? To a 5.8. Wow. Oh, I didn't know that. That was in the paper. They upgraded it to the strongest Oklahoma's ever had. Yeah, I was walking. We felt it good here. Well, yes. We felt it. Uh, the telephone poles were doing this. Mm. I was out walking when it happened. You could hear it, hear it, and then feel it. That's what I. We were upstairs. Uh, yeah. And it, uh -huh. yeah. In the th I'd say it vibrated pretty much in a three story. You would have I felt checked, it. I uh, checked. I haven't found any cracks. Which surprises me because our foundation is a hundred year old brick and mortar. And that old mortar, you know, is not good cement anymore. No, we did have it. And so far. We had some guys come and fix though to do the I'm ceiling. thinking about getting some earthquake insurance though. Mm -hmm. A lady told me the other day uh, probably just add sixty dollars to my premium. Premium for three months or for a year. For a year. Oh well it's well worth it for that. This house is probably built has probably solid oak. Wood in it though too, mm -hmm. or I guess that was pretty solid and, and hard. Blackjacks or whatever was grown out here. Yeah, oh. it was built 
um, at one time uh, at Carlton, which is just uh, east and south of Canton, just a little bit here. No town there, no uh, They used to have a sawmill, and the lumber used in this was cut out there and dated and everything on it, so. You know a lot about this. It has history. If the walls could talk, you'd learn a little bit more, huh? Yes. <laughs> We try to keep old stuff. We, we, I like it. We keep this as long as it works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this house had a uh, central heating unit, uh, coal fired. The, we found the ductwork and stuff. No, no furnace, you know, and there's coal. There was an old coal chute on the west side of the house to go in to throw the coal down there. They so probably we, came in on the train? Probably. Coal. Yes, I guess that'll be on film on it. That's pretty. So what's your fondest memory of OSU of your time there? I don't know, I told uh, Judy that, uh, just a while back that I said uh, I lived in the dorm for three years, become well acquainted with some of the boys, you know, and after we got married, I never did go back and see them. And I don't, I don't know why. Know. I don't know yet. We were good friends. Never had any contact with them again. Or since? Or since. Or since. So I don't know what happened to them, where they ended up, and all that. One, uh, my roommate now, he was from Kent. So I see him every day, you know, but the other guys from uh, various towns. Well, now we did have contact with the one that has the nursery over Tahlequah. Well, that's true, but... He was able to help us when you... Uh, but I really haven't uh, kept track of him either. But he didn't live in the dorm. I just... He had a nursery in uh, Tahlequah. become acquainted with him in our class because he was in horticulture too. But the guy's in the dorm itself. After I moved out and Virgil moved out, we just lost contact. Uh, I don't know why. They may have gotten girlfriends and got tied up with that, yeah. with them too. Well, out of all of the ones that started college with Keith, when Keith did, uh, he and his roommate were the only two that graduated from college. The rest of them all dropped out. Yeah. Out of our high school class. There was about seven or eight of us went over there to school. Everybody else quit. Any idea of why? No. One of them, who was my roommate the first year, he got to uh, DJ and for the campus radio station and forgot to go to class. <laughs> <laughs> the others, I don't know, one or two of them joined the service and I don't know, they just, I don't know why they ever went back, to, some of them probably went back to school eventually and some didn't. Well, life happens and takes you different directions. Mm -hmm. But I regret not following up with the other guys who I played golf with, bowled with. And well, with the, with the internet nowadays, you could probably find them, them with a little bit of work. Yes, we can find them. Yeah. I remember their names. We were in charge of the 
all school here at Canton reunion this year. And you can find anybody. <laughs> You can and women is a little bit harder if they've mm -hmm. married married a couple, you know, once Same or twice, then it's hard to harder to find. But you look long enough, you'll find, mm -hmm. which is scary in itself. I think all that to be out there, but yeah, it's uh, come back from Vietnam. One of the guys over there, uh, he was a uh, had been there just a, a short time when I got there. And uh, then when I got sent home, uh, actually, I guess I was ahead of him, but I didn't go to my unit in Vietnam when I first got there. I was what they call TDY to another unit temporary. And so when I got to my regular unit, this guy was there and he said, oh, uh, you know, I was going to be after him because he was already there. He had a shorter time than me, but it came out that I had a shorter time than him. But uh, so when we got out of the service, I got out first and was sent to uh, Fort Hood, Fort Hood, Fort Hood, Texas. And a short time, well, he was uh, stationed down there too. But then we uh, lost contact once we got out of the service. One night, what was it, middle of the night, mm -hmm. he calls. Uh, he, he was from California. He called in the middle of the night, we just talked and then never did uh, communicate anymore. I always wondered what happened to him. He had a lot of problems though. Mm -hmm. From Vietnam. Keith was considered the old man of the unit. <laughs> he was one of the older ones. Yeah, I don't even know why I got drafted. He was almost too old. Married, college degree, and uh, these other guys, younger, not married, no no college, hmm. and they didn't get drafted. Well, they didn't want your bug knowledge. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, we made it through. Made it through. And you came back and went to Fort Hood from, from there and discharged from Fort, Wood, Fort Hood? Yeah. Had a few months left. Uh, they sent us to Fort Hood. What, three or four months? About. And where were you, Darren? You had stayed here? I, when he went to Fort Hood, when he came home, I moved to Fort Hood. Yeah, she stayed here while I was in the service. I had, we had been in Enid with the, with the pet shop, but I was working for First National Bank in Enid, and uh, I had to move back home and help my folks. That's what I said. It's always been a family crisis, and we came and took care of it. So... How did I get picked? For this? Well, someone nominated you, but I can't tell you who that was. No. They, asked, they, they asked me not to, so. Somebody that uh, could have done this to me. Well, I mean, we're always looking for <laughs> You're thinking of Virgil Lawrence. I got picked. <laughs> You're thinking that Virgil would do it. <laughs> You've done well. It's not been hard, has it? No. no. We can we can finish them, and if there's anything else, do you anything else you want to add? We'll close out. I don't know. I think we went all through my life. <laughs> well, I usually my last question I usually ask people is how they want to be remembered, and when history's written about you, what do you want people to to remember about you? I don't know. 
good golfer, good snake catcher. No. <laughs> I, I can tell you what people say about him here okay. in town. If you want a job done and done right, call Keith Long to do it. And he had that in high school because he was in Scouts. He's also been on the council for the Boy Scouts. He was mayor. He's been president of the school board, president of the Chamber of Commerce. He's a deacon in our church. He's worked with youth groups. And still is, whether he wants to or not. <laughs> and it's still involved in our school. Not too much. I've come back. Had a good work ethic. I think the uh, younger ones need to take over, but they're not. You just ease out and someone will have to. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just... I'm ready to let them have it. <laughs> well, I appreciate you taking time to spend with me this afternoon. It's been great. Thank you. I uh, appreciate the chance, I guess. And go Pokes. Go Pokes. Go Pokes. We've got to get tickets.